ultimately the idea behind this deck is to go wide um, and then limit your opponent's ability to go wide. So the mantra behind this deck is gain a body, remove a body, right? So if we go into the GG mons, essentially you're going to be building your opponent's discard pile by swinging over things and through the effects of Gallant Mon, which removes uh, 6k DP Digimon and stuff like that. Um, another thing that you can do is Millennium Mon, which, you know, an entire stack of Digimon just builds, like, literally just gets rid of uh, the sources, so it builds your opponent's trash pile to get that extra DP boost. I'm running one Yokomon because, you know, I want my Larvo Garidamon, you'll see later, to swing over things while I'm waiting for pieces. And Yokomon just gets me that extra DP boost that is very crucial in this deck. Because once again, the mantra behind this deck is gain a body, your opponent loses a body. Alright? So four copies of Monodramon, naturally almost every deck has to run a two cost. Just because early game, it's really good at, you know, maintaining pace, uh, putting your opponent to one, etc. as you build your pieces. The Giyomon just builds that trash engine. Once again, five or more cards, you gain an extra DP. So early mid game, you already have you already have that Gilmon on, um, and with a GG, that Larvo could get up to 10k. Um, running three copies of Biomon. So this is my play extender. So Biomon is what really provides that ability of Gallantmon. Like it, it allows you to take full advantage of Gallantmon, and I'll explain later. Because you gain a memory on deletion if it's your turn, so you swing into something and then you, you know, gain a memory if, if Biomon dies. So I'm running four copies of Agumon here, which ultimately this Digimon gets plus 1k DP. Um, just that extra DP boost. So either way, I just want to keep my rookies. The goal is to DP boost my other Digimon. I'm never swinging with them ideally besides the Biomon. Four copies of Dark Tyranimon, one cost to Evo. It's kind of like a no-brainer, especially when... Um, because the way I see the evolution costs is that it's an incremental gain, an incremental kind of like, um, it's an investment, right? So if I'm paying one here, that ultimately makes the paying four in Crest or Gallantmon cheaper in the long run. Or it gets me to the Crest much quicker, um, or the Gallant much quicker. So that, that's kind of why you run that one Evo. Three copies of Skull Greymon. This is my little personal spice. So once again, the idea is gain a body, your opponent loses a body. So if your opponent starts swinging with rookies and they don't have jamming and they hit this Greymon, not only do they lose that rookie that swung, but I gain that Greymon and that goes into my board. Really helps red for when red bricks because red does have that, that reputation for bricking. <laughs> so it does help address that situation and honestly, People ask me, like, does it feel bad to draw into this Greymon? And it's like, not really. Like, there's only really four... Co there's only realistically, like, one type of one cost to Evo Red, I think. And it's only Dark Tyranno. So everything else is two cost anyway. So, I mean, I'm getting the DP boost that I need from my eggs and from my rookies. And I'm playing relatively high DP level fives and above. So this Greymon actually works in the deck. Four copies of the blocker Cordramon because obviously you need to have that blocker. Really works well as a defensive tactic or a stall tactic when you digivolve into Kreskarurumon and you get to play the Cordramon from revealing cards. I've done that a lot. I've actually found that some of my opponents were really annoyed by Cordramon today. <laughs> um, oops, I keep hitting that anyway. I'm running three copies of Skull Greymon. Uh, a lot of people like to tech Skull Greymon at one or two, but I'm running a full three. And the reason why is he could come out for free through Kreskarurumon. And if you do that, you can actually knock out opponent's blockers for free. And then threaten a Mega later. Once again, like, gain a body, lose a body, right? So you gain that Skull, your opponent loses that blocker. And then you're threatening Gallantmon next turn, which could lead to another um, Digimon lost on their side of the field. So at the same time, it's really great for Ragnalord. And I think Ragnalord's... A slightly hyped right now um because of how it's topped and stuff like i've topped with black ragnarok and i love it so here we are with three skull grays
four copies of Largvo Garidamon because this guy is going to be doing a lot of the swinging while I get to my while I look for my pieces. Um, so at 8k, he could get up to 10k technically with the rookies and the eggs. Allows me to swing over most things that are level 5. Uh, allows me to swing over Bancho, which is okay with me, you know. So moving on from that, two cost to play as well. Running one copy of Metal Greymon because I'm running three level 7s. I found that Metal Greymon can also be very clutch with piercing. Um, especially if I can get in the 9k, I can swing over most level 5s easily and return a level 7 um, virus attributed Digimon from trash to hand. So if I have my Millenniumons and my Alteress come from security, what's happening is I can get them, uh, well, discarded through like a security check, I can get them back and uh, threaten that level 7. So the star of the show, four copies of Kreskurumon, four cost to Evo in red. And it has, it's got reboots, so, you know, I can actually swing and be protected next turn by going um, unsuspending. And when Digivolving, you reveal one card from the top of your deck for each Digimon your opponent has in play. And then you may play one red or black um, Digimon card with a level of 5 or less from among them without paying its minimum cost. So once again, literally anything level 5 or lower becomes free for me. And it's so crucial because it's helped me unbrick brick hands in red so many times and i think crest is a must play if you're just trying to tech him just keep him at two um really great if you're forced to hard cast a level five and you get into crest you can now match your opponent body for body early game right you can at least try to catch up at least so it's really good three copies of gallimon four cost to evo so both of them are four cost to evo in level six it might sound really costly but with the ties and the Mons, it's not that bad at all. Also, once again, each of these Digivolutions are either giving me another Digimon or taking another Digimon away from my opponent. So because I do that, I could even optimally leave them at one memory if I start at three for the turn. And they're even more at a less advantageous uh, board state. So once again, like also Gallimon's super great late game because you can trash one of your opponent's security cards for every 10 cards in your trash um there were plays where you know kreskurumon will bring out a blocker that literally buys me that last turn to have a beamon swing get into gallopmon take two checks away and swing away. you know so literally that's it's awesome now two copies of millennium on you guys are probably wondering why is he running regular omni or whatever omni blah, blah, blah. uh it's because i don't have omni and also because i don't find omni as important important in a deck like this versus Millenniumon because Millenniumon is once again on deletion you can actually you know replay Millenniumon from trash if you have Digivolution sources under Millenniumon in addition to that when Digivolving you can return your opponent's um, Digimon one of your Digimon one of their Digimon to the bottom of their deck and trash all of those sources so that that bottom of the deck and source removal not only builds the Gallimon engine but it means you're never seeing whatever card I took to the bottom of the deck again. Um, and it's it's really good. Like, I can I can send a level 7 to the bottom of the deck, and they can't use Metal Mommy Mons, Metal Grey Mons, etc. And um, at 13k, it comes back, once again, bringing back those Digimon on the field, on the board, and maintaining that board presence. Um, really good. So I'm wanting one copy of Alteress because that... It, it's it's basically my board wipe uh it's kind of like my anti rookie rush in addition to the blockers and the security digimon so i feel like all one alter s is enough plus i only have the one alter s i'm not running volk because volk doesn't really provide too much value i feel like if i drop volk my opponent can just re-establish their board state and this deck heavily relies upon my opponent having zero board state so that's why i run one alter s also allows me to swing for game no matter how many blockers my opponent puts down if i have a level six underneath through its when attacking effect and it's a really good card there two copies of gaia force uh removal so really good um obviously you guys know what gaia force is man. elite one of your opponents digimon surprise mother gaia you know what i mean um eight cost to play but if it comes from security it's utterly devastating as long as you're not breaking <laughs> like what happened against my shy and greymon matchup in game three um two copies of the Four cost tie because not only is stabilizing your memory with red super important, especially if you're not running Omni, but the extra security check is also really good. 
also facilitates the or like propels the Gallimon when digivolving in fact to destroy or delete a Digimon with 6,000 DP or lower on your opponent's side of the board when digivolving. Same thing goes for this tie. Also, when you look at this tie, even if I have one of these ties out and I have an Agumon out and a Gigimon out, that puts like Larval Goritamon on 11k and all of a sudden you start being able to swing over things. It also helps um, the Gallopmon and the Kreskurumon who both have only 11k DP. So they can get to 12, 13k and start to swing over security more confidently. Usually when I get to 12, 13k, I swing and not kind of think twice. That way I'm building their trash pile for Gallopmon to once again discard more things late game. Um, yeah, so that's the deck guys. If I were to make any adjustments, I would like based on the tournament and how it went, my main adjustment would be to actually get rid of a Metal Greymon and to remove a Beomon and to just add like two Ground Dramon, right? There we go. So the reason why I'm adding two Ground Dramon instead is simply because um, I find that I don't necessarily always use the effect of Metal Greymon. First of all, I don't really use it. Um, and then I don't actually always have to grab like a Millennium on or an Ultra S from Trash. Typically, I draw into it. It's not as often that they show up in security. And if they do, it's not a big deal. Um, this deck also has enough removal anyway. Uh, incremental removal throughout the game. As you digivolve into things, as you bring your blockers out, as you trade for things or swing over things that I don't necessarily need that Metal Grey, so I bumped him down to zero. I bumped a Beomon down to two as well because I don't want to see Beomon as often as the other cards. Like, Beomon is something that I want to hold on to if I can. Also, the ironic thing about Red is you can Brick from drawing into too many rookies too early. So I think that that happened to me a lot because I had 15 in my deck. That's like 30% of my deck, so... um. 30% of my deck is all rookies. There's a chance that like if I open with three, three turns later, I draw into four and then I don't have the other pieces that I need to actually go up into the win conditions. So I dropped them down to two and then that allows me to have two open slots for Ground Dramon, which is a really, really good hard play card because it's only five cost and it's already level five. That way I can turbo up into Cress in two turns and give my opponent the least amount of memory possible. I found that sometimes I was forced to play Larval Garidamon um, from my hand because I just bricked. Uh, and then you kind of just hope that the Larvo sticks, which has stuck like 80% of the time he sticks because all the other decks in this meta start to build up into things or swing early with little guys, right? So Larvo's fine at four, I think. Um, and then I, I'll test with the ground at two for now. One thing I can do as well is remove a Larvo and add a Gaia Force, but that's about it. Like it's literally just testing and playthrough and and really exploring the different options that this deck can do. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I don't know how do you guys feel about that. Um, if you guys think this is a good build, let me know. If you guys hate it, let me know. Um, I went two two at Gyroshan's tournament. It was a lot of fun. Uh, shout out Gyroshan, you have the best tournaments. You have the best mats that are put up, and it's just so awesome. I tried to get one. I don't even know what I placed, but I'll check after this. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm also on YouTube and Twitch. You already know. <laughs> Support your boy if you want. Um, but thank you so much. Take care and have a good night, y'all. Bye-bye.